Hi, we're here in Edison, Washington at IE Gallery today to look at this exhibit um, from the Oyster Dome print studio with Thomas Wood and cohorts. And we're fortunate to have Mandy Jean Turner with us here today. And she's going to walk us through the exhibit a little bit. And she was the print puller for most of these, almost every single one of this, these prints. So Mandy, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Why don't do you want to start telling us about, well, maybe talk about Tom and your um, working relationship and how this show came about and that possibly that first print right there, the Oyster Dome as well. So I met Thomas Wood uh, practically a decade ago, actually right behind this gallery here in Tweets. Mm -hmm. And I became his assistant and now kind of, uh, he's sort of the master that's taught me a lot of his work. So over these years that we've been working together, we have occasionally had friends of ours who are local artists that come from the valley be able to come up to his actual personal studio where we would both guide artists through the printing process because if you don't know about it, it's relatively tricky. So we were able to work together through both artistic critique and also technical assistance in aiding in local artists to make work. And this is a Bellingham studio. Bellingham lives. Yeah, Bellingham studio and he's We've called it the Oyster Dome Studio because it's this concept of something that is doming around all of these people that sort of work together. And he has been working on this image that's based off of a painting of Edison from up on top of the mm -hmm. Chequinet Mountains. And it yeah. sort of ties us together in the fact that we're this large landscape that is super surreal to a lot of us. And as we know, he's a master at being able to capture these both mm -hmm. true but very mystical viewpoints of how this landscape affects. Mm -hmm. it's a very panoramic feeling. And he sat up there, I think, a few years ago and did a sketch of the valley below. It was also during winter time, so mm -hmm. it's similar to now that it's been flooded. Yeah. So it's sort of a very unique time as well. Yeah, and for those who don't know, the Oyster Dome is this promontory. Um, up in the Cascades that it looks almost like an oyster. It's um, pretty raw, not covered in greenery. And um, it's a favorite hiking place and launching pad for hang gliding. Yeah. So we have, as we've been working with these artists all these years, we'd sort of end up with these additions and then we'd all look at each other and wonder, well, now what do we do with these? Artists would ask me, I have an addition of work, I'm a painter, but how do I sell this? So we asked Margie here at IE if she'd be willing, as if the gallery was willing, to host and show the work that has been produced in the studio. And very fortunately, we were all accepted by her to come and join. And it's been incredibly exciting mm -hmm. to let everyone see each other's work because they no one really was seeing what anybody else was up to it was over the course of many years mm -hmm. and we also were able to get some artists that have been interested in printmaking but never able to jump into it mm -hmm. get to have some work and work with me and it was just so much fun we brought every almost every medium except for mesotint mm -hmm. into the show and at least in, involved in intaglio mm -hmm. printmaking so we have a piece like this one which we've never actually shown up until now. And it's mostly all etching and some dry point and occasionally a little bit of um, engraving. And mm -hmm. we've used a shinko lay, mm -hmm. which you can see these deckled edges. And this is uh, translate as equality under the law. And these first three we're looking at are Tom Wood's um, etchings. Which are all, have not been shown before. Mm -hmm. So that's a great way for them to come out into the world. Yeah. And this one's quite wonderful. Uh, on a personal note, Tom has been educating himself on the level of mitochondria and what it is to sort of have these invisible to our human eye beings and how they're playing out in huge parts that we're just not aware of. And so this is his artificial intelligence mm -hmm. that we worked on a couple of years ago, towards the beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And it's just one that was really fun. I mean, 
Yeah, he particularly loves this one. He it's, told me. It's so good. I mean, we had just, it was a joy having it happen. Mm, this is aqua tint, but not the right aqua Yeah, tint. this is aqua tint, which means we use a rosin yeah. powder that is adhered to the plate via a propane flame and then etched in the bath for a specific amount of time. Okay, I didn't really get all that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's why we have you here. That's Mandy. a fancy dragon. Mandy was great in the studio, and I went in there and played <laughs> around, and Tom was wonderful at twisting some of our arms who didn't want to go up there. But I go up to visit him, but I finally went, sat down, and did a little bit of printing, too. Yeah, it was delightful. This is beautiful, too, of David Blakesley's. This is David Blakesley. This particular uh, drive points take a lot of physical force to move yeah. what is a steel barren in through the copper or zinc. This is yeah. done on copper. He's an incredibly physically strong man, so this was a really exciting yeah. method to have him involved in. Because it's a dry process, it never touches the acid baths. And mm -hmm. him and I are continuing to work on these. It's a it's an ever-growing addition. It will probably end around 20. But we print each state in five. So there's a total of five of each version as it keeps to grow. Mm -hmm. So it's beyond it's changed from this now, and they all have their own beauty and they all have their own mm -hmm. likeliness in there. So so far we just have the first state in the gallery, is that correct? You have your second state here actually as well. Ooh. It's in the folders. Okay, that's what's fun too, is to go through the folders or portfolios because they're not all the and same. And see how every etching, every pull, every print will be different in some way. And here we are, Mandy Jean Turner's work. Beautiful. This was a uh, Tom has been. I went to school for printmaking to jump back in college many years ago, and. Since then, moving out into the Pacific Northwest, I had chosen to start doing other art forms because I didn't have access to a print studio. Um, so I sort of fell out of it, but then I started working with Tom mm -hmm. and was not yet ready to focus back onto my own imagery yet, but through these last few years of him so desperately pushing and pulling me to try to get to do my own work, I'm finally able to start getting back into that process. Mm -hmm. So, this and has been... Swallow me. This one, yep. And this was one of the second ones I've done in the studio mm -hmm. in the last year or so. I will eventually make way more work, but... So. And that's a straight etching? This is etching, and there's uh, some more after this state that are also done with Aquatint. So there's two mm -hmm. states of this. Okay. And then this piece is done as a four plate color print. This mm -hmm. is one of the really wonderful things I'm learning from Tom is how to do this level of work. It's a super deep etch on the black plate, which is the one that sort of ties all the colors together. Mm -hmm. When you say super deep, is that why the there's almost texture rising above the surface? Absolutely, that is just a thick buildup of ink that has been in those lines. Wow. So that's a six hour etch, which is a lot, um, because if you're trying to do something incredibly detailed, it would fall out of the plate. Right, and this is um, called the moon. And that's... And it's got the very northwest feel to it. And, it's and gorgeous very, colors. And it has a, a chincole on it, and yeah, it's got four colored, three colored plates, and then the black one, and mm -hmm. as they all layer together, you get this velvety texture that's quite exciting. Yeah, that's beautiful texture. Let's pop over to this little guy, the Great Construction. This is an addition of 30, and is that also etching? Uh, that's etching in a really thick aqua tint or a large particle aqua tint. Uh, oh, okay. Goya actually did a lot of work quite like that. Okay. And it's got a little bit of hand coloring in it. And this one, oh, okay, the, does this one actually have, yeah, there's a little pink on the iris. Yeah, they, all of them in the edition. As I notice in the portfolio, some have more hand coloring. This one's yep. very lightly handled. And some of them don't have any, and some have a lot. Beautiful, beautiful detail. We're going to go over to Heidi's Epstein's. Her work is really exciting to do with her because she is got such a strong personality in how she handles art forms. Mm -hmm. So to work with her, she had a very strong mental image of what she wanted. Also, she has studied with Tom 
at El Bizonte in Italy, which is a school he spent a lot of time at and practiced at and is well loved at. So they were both students at the same time? Um, they both, they all went as part of a larger group with oh, Thomas okay. Sherwood and oh, studied. Okay. So she actually has a wonderful amount of knowledge about how it works and so when I got to go in and work with her, it was really exciting because we both could discuss in the way we knew what we wanted to get, and so we had we were able to nerd out with each other. Like mm. you say. And that's um, it's it, she puts it under intaglio, but that's a really large category, isn't it? It's um, it's so this is etching. This is etching, and then the way that we get that gray plate tone is in me wiping it yes and choosing the right temperature of the plate okay. physically and then this one is going to be an intaglio and this also is going to have a uh, aqua tint on it here as well mm -hmm. and we just chose the way it gets printed what do i look for to tell me this has an aqua tint as well it's this the texture, the texture of this colored yeah. area yeah is the way you get tone basically oh, okay Without it, you just, these will, you'll have a great example in the next two examples of something without yeah. aquatin and with a lot of aquatin. And this doesn't look like it has chine collet, but others do, is that correct? Yes, this one, I do not. Yeah, it says chine collet, but I think it was just for the other ones. I believe actually the way that this one is laid out is there are two triangles uh -huh. of chine collet. Oh, okay. So you can see. Oh, I see. This tiny, and the, the way that they both take the ink That's differently. So, the chincole is not the whole piece, it's just right. these two triangles. Okay. Okay. And that's what allows that wonderful change. And then this is Victor Sandbloom's work. Okay, let's start up here with um, the whale's way. The way that we got Victor working up there is we started him with some dry point sketches back when there was a larger group of us sort of hanging out in the studio. I don't, small regular mm -hmm. basis. I was up there on Wednesdays sometimes. Yeah. Yep, we had a small group forming and then I got him to be doing some etching and the way that Victor and I worked together is it really fell into us collaborating on these pieces because we ended up working on these during COVID when we weren't allowing people to come into the studio. Right, right. So I would deliver or prepare a plate by putting a hard ground on there for Victor and we would have a trade-off meeting, usually here at Tweets, and he would take his plate home and draw, scribe the image in, mm -hmm. and I would choose how long to etch things, and then I would add the aqua tint and sort of ballpark back and forth with him about how far we'd etch it. But a lot of that just takes a lot of what is called stop out work. What, what do you mean when you say how long to etch it? So for instance, this is a great way to watch right here. This white right here, yeah. has almost no aqua tint because I didn't allow it to etch. Oh. And then as it fades right here, this gets darker. Are these all aqua tint? All aqua tint. Oh, because none of them say aqua tint. Um, they all are, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> these are actually the, some of the most aqua tinted I was going to say, it, can, it has to be more than etching. Yeah. Because you get all that That rich character. tone. Yeah, so there was a lot of... A lot that Mandy did. Yeah, so it was... Um, so the drawing... See, when I think etching, I think that's so he, when you're laying the pen Victor to did the scribing. The scribing. And then I did the length of how long it's etched and then did the aqua tint. Oh, okay. This yeah. one, so these I really went more, for it. <laughs> yeah, these were are considered more of a collaboration and because of that. And it was just a lot of fun because he just told me he trusted me and just would go for it. And this was really great because then, when I first sent him an, an image of this as I was pulling it, he's like, you just made a PK writer. Oh. Which ironically, I had not been educated about quite yet. And uh -huh. turns out to be one of Thomas Wood's most influential painters, yeah. as many people. And Ed Camutas. And so it was just ironic yeah. that of course I made a piece in that light, just not knowing because I'd seen work inspired by him. Yeah. So it was just, oh, it was great. And I think this one, and also look at this lighthouse. Yeah. We are also, I, I keep saying I have a crash on that part of the plate. Like that little. The white house, the lighthouse. Yeah, the little lighthouse. Is, she's just pretty charming. I'm trying to get it to come into focus, but no, no, there we go. Well. Okay, now let's go over to Peter Van Zanden. So Peter Van Zanden and I have had a long standing 
back and forth communication and have worked together. We had a large show at Smith and Valley. I forget how many years ago. Four or five. Four or five years ago at Smith and Valley. I think about five now. And this is really great because he did these large sculptures. Then I did these blueprints based on his work. Mm -hmm. And then I've been trying to get him to do an intaglio plate. So he made a etching based off of my etchings. Yes, about so, his new sculpture. About his new sculpture. And so I just, him and I had this really great banter yeah. back and forth. So it was just, it was so much fun to work with him. And of course, him. it's a dragonfly, and it's his... And you can see the dragonfly is in Edison right yeah. now. Yeah, it's hanging down, hanging yeah. down by the chop shop, isn't it? Somewhere? Yep, it's down by Terramar, outside of Terramar, which is next yeah. to a warehouse that I share with Peter Van Zanden. And this is a etching? This is just etching? Yeah. And what's great about this is there's been all these little scratch marks that sort of happen into the plate, mm -hmm. and they etch into it and just, oh, it gives it such a beautiful feel. Yeah. And this comes in again, like, I have this printed on multiple kinds of paper. Yeah. So there's all kinds of different feels for it. And these are wonderful. I sat around for a while. These are David Kane's. David C. Kane sat around. He seemed a natural for this process. Oh, he was so, it was so great. He, and he's prolific in the sense of he just does a lot of drawings mm -hmm. and so it was great just to hand him a plate and he had no fear of what he's gonna mm -hmm. make on it just went for it and then again it was a lot of Tom and I sort of throwing in our two cents about should we add aquatints which I'm so glad we did aquatints on all of it mm -hmm. yeah, it works beautifully because they were so beautiful it works beautifully this is called, um, yeah, Etching Aqua Tint on all of them. And number these five. are just by numbers, number five. They were just a joy. It was a really good time to work with him. Yeah. Wonderful. He always has a wonderful, weird, um, cubistic into surrealism thing. Yeah. They're captivating. Very moody. Great oh, they're very dreamlike. It feels like you're in a dream looking at them. Yeah. And then we go into Alan Moe. Alan Moe was a really fun time because he, him and Tom, I guess, for many years, were just trying to, Tom has always been trying to get Alan to make prints. Alan was doing other things. And finally, we sort of twisted his arm and he drew into this plate that I had. And these are all, always copper plates. Always copper plates so far, yep. And we finally got him to make some marks and he wasn't quite in love with the way they were being printed, so then I thought, well, let's do some relief roll. Because this, I have, the fun thing about working with these artists is I understand most of their bodies of work and how they work. So it was always trying to figure out sort of what their flavor was gonna be. Mm -hmm. And understanding how to help them, because I could see them working well in printmaking, but they couldn't always see what we were making and think that yeah, they were gonna Yeah, how to bring work. their expression into that form. Right, so. We were able to do this, and then Tom would come into the studio and throw a whole nother idea. So we had just this incredible communication and these weaving of ideas about how things could become. And nothing could have happened without all of us that were involved mm -hmm. at the right times. I mean, it was so poetic and what we all needed to get things places. And I always felt so special to sort of just be the person that was able to be told, like, oh, let's try this, and like, just mm -hmm. giddy to try. And it was just, I mean, there was a couple of failures, but I mean, a lot of these, we really landed on some great They're feelings. gorgeous. And you're really good at that, Mandy, at working with these artists and all their different backgrounds and their different styles. Oh, yeah. And like, bringing their strengths out. And it was like this piece in particular, Alan had been working on these indigo pieces of a lot of fabric last winter, about a year ago, I believe. And he'd done this plate, and when this printed it in Toglio, it's not super moving. But then I thought, wait, he's working in these deep blues, he's doing this in Toglio, let me just, or this Chabor, I'm like, let me just try this. So I rolled this up and just relief roll indigo blue. And he was, it was just so fun watching Alan come see it. He was just elated. He was, yeah. And Tom and I were just laughing, because we were like, oh, we got it, we nailed it. We figured out what Alan wanted to see in his work. So it was just, it was great. That's beautiful. I just see you once in a while. And it's really and, neat. And it's what I love is Alan when he came in. There's a like, way. Where did those waves come from? And I said, they've been there. 
Yeah, there's this, and I, I can't tell and, you why. It's and not. In every single edition, they're, they're there. They're there, and there's no reason I can figure out it's all an illusion of when yeah. you're looking at this. There's this huge illusion yeah. that just casts these lines on. It's not from the way it's rolled or anything. It's the beauty of printmaking is these gorgeous things yeah. happen. And, of course, Alan is so in love with sort of the process within the process. And what happens with nature and when things come together, yeah. Yeah, the, you don't always know why it happens, but, goodness, it's really cool that it did. And then this wall, I just realized now, these are all Bellingham people on this wall. Not that we intentionally put them together. <laughs> um, you are correct. And this is, um, it says Bob, it's Rob Shepard. So this is Rob <laughs> Shepard. Yeah, Rob Shepard. Rob Shepard, who is a neighbor of Tom's up at the studio. He lives just down the alleyway. And he is so interested, especially in the science, but also how to make things super beautiful in the printmaking process. So he's also a letterpress artist. He's been mm. doing this for a long time, and he understands so much about mm -hmm. printmaking in general. So he, when we were starting to work on this uh, last year, he made these just test plates, mm. just sort of testing to see mm -hmm. how long it takes. Tom and I, ironically, have never really done this. Mm -hmm. It was just sort of funny. We're like, oh, goodness, we never thought about this. Yeah. But the way that Rob is able to do line work, they're just, I, Tom and I fell just madly in love with them and sort of print them together. It also helps explain. You, it's really funny if you come in here and look at the gallery because... It's everything from two minutes right. all the way to two hours in the acid, so it helps you understand oh, right. the technicalities. I that, can get that from when artists do, painters do color charts. Color charts. Check that. So mm -hmm. it's the same kind of thing, but oh, it's, it's really fun to come in and look at this. It's mm -hmm. one of my favorite things to stare at. Wow. So that's a really exciting piece. And it looks so beautifully architectural, too. It looks like an architect mm, is coming up with a landscape architect doing a Yeah, park, I mean, it, it's, it's so based on, you can study old engraving and then etch. I mean, it goes so yeah. far back into the neat history. We were all sort of reading the same old history book at the same time. Huh. Um, this is Rachel Foreman's work. She is... Um, also Bellingham. She's a Bellingham artist, and she is incredible in so many ways. She works primarily with soft ground. I'm trying to figure out the way to keep this in the most simple way. It's uh, one of the more difficult of the grounds of printmaking because it's so finicky. It depends mm -hmm. on the temperature that you're working with of that day or it can change mm -hmm. with maybe you accidentally grab an older soft ground to a newer soft ground and you've just altered it. Your bath could be a different temperature. Mm -hmm. And she's really been able to master how to handle these grounds. The soft ground. Mm -hmm. The soft ground. And this one is really absolutely gorgeous because instead of what I was doing, which is multiple plates, she just came in here with some oil pastel mm -hmm. and colored it. And that's a really traditional method. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can't tell, but was it just black ink before she came in with the oil pastel? It kind of looks like it. It's just black, and sometimes it's a bit, uh -huh. it's a little warm, so it's oh, yeah. sepia. It tends to be, uh, there's see. not a lot of black ink that tends to yeah. happen. And um, then the three other pieces are nudes, and um, just go back a little bit. Like, Rachel is a friend of Tom's, and he much admires her work, and... And so she didn't actually come through his studio to do these, but she, but he wanted she and Mandy had, wanted to include her. Yeah, it felt like she was a really important story of kind of distilled printmaking in Bellingham, and also yeah. her ability to really handle the material. Yeah. Um, also, somebody that um, I would love to work with if that ever happens, if her and I ever mm -hmm. can kind of get to that place that she's ready to kind of do something like that. And I love the um, hatch marks. Yeah, she handles, I mean, just to come see these close up in person is yeah. really spectacular. Yeah. She's just got an incredible hand. So she's oh, she's a wonderful woman. She's so delightful. And then we go to Cheese Me. Oh, these are so fun. Okay, so I'm sure that some of you have heard about Woodfish, which is Thomas Wood, and Fish Boy, Randy Clark from Bellingham. They have, for many, many years now, done artworks together, even shows together, painted on the same painting at the same time together. Mm -hmm. um, so we had to include Randy. I mean, it was so great. Tom threw him this plate, I don't know, six, seven months ago, and 
I'd go over there and pick up the plate, take it back. They'd tell me to etch, etch the mm -hmm. hell out of it. So I would, I would just drop it in the bath and forget about it and bring it back. And I, I did a bunch of little stop out work on here too with him. And mm -hmm. there's a bunch of, very, these ones are really fun to come in and look at because in the folder that we have in here, there's a lot of hand colored ones. Mm -hmm. Randy went wild with it. It was so wonderful. Mm -hmm. Just to, I mean, and also there's something so good about his line work and his abil ability to sculpt great mm -hmm. images. He so does, yeah. It's just, it's so good. So this one was a lot of fun. And also, I mean, I, I love an excuse to have to go shake Randy down for a plate. Like, yeah. Come on, man, I'm, I'm coming over in 30. Get yeah. some lines on there. So that's always a great uh, excuse for me to have to run across town. Yeah. And him and Tom have... They just have such a great working relationship together, so that was a really fun, fun and all, one. And all these artists have really, uh, it is great to look through the portfolios and see what they have. Oh, do you want to pick up that little small one that's in a bad frame? Uh, yes! Right there? Okay. So these are... Um, this is one of the first dry ones dry. you did when we were up at Tom's. Yeah. So this is a dry point. And it's also a mesotint. You did do some mesotint so there. Mm -hmm. Correct that earlier statement. Yep, there is mesotint there, which is done with a rocker. I'm not even going to begin to describe. And I didn't really know what I was doing, of course, and I didn't really want to do it. <laughs> Tom was insistent, and Mandy was such a good helper. And we just, well, we had a lot of fun. And then it was really great because we were talking about still needing to have you come up and make work before the show. And Victor Sandbloom asked us why we weren't gonna have you do mono prints because it's so much like the way you print. Yeah. So we brought you in. Hi. Hello there. Hi. We'll you guys are, in. you guys can uh, look around. We're just finishing an interview. Oh, is that okay? Yeah. yeah. We'll just be a minute with yeah. our okay. Perfect. So and this was a really great thing because Victor realized, I mean, that's what's so fun about this whole group of people is Victor understands how Marty is as a painter, and to him it just made so much sense and was confusing. I'm not a sketcher. I no. Know somebody, and Victor and David, Kane, and they a lot of those people, they walk around with their little sketchbooks. They, they draw. They're into line work, and if you're not into line work, yeah. you're making, it can be difficult. But I did do line work here. You did, and it was so <laughs> great to work with making colors with you and spreading the ink out. and. Oh, it's just a great time and a great day just to be able to see that you get sort of entranced in these. Yeah, it was very fun and loose. And it's just, oh, they were delightful. And there's also something that was great to watch about you because you knew to just play. Yeah. Some people grab a plate and I am notorious for it. Yeah. I get so intimidated and I don't know why. I have just piles of copper and I'll just put it down and walk yeah. away. And so it's so great to have you just jump right on in there and just yeah, go I'm for it of, and make work. That's how I know how to... Paint. Yeah, yeah so. so it was it was really great. So it this whole show felt like the first time people got to see what we've been doing mm -hmm. up at Tom's space. And for him and I, a lot of it is he has done all most all his work privately, and so me being involved mm -hmm. for the last decade was already a unique experience. And then being able to bring in other artists and now mm -hmm. continually wanting to work with artists. And it's a nice culmination because it carried on in its own way throughout COVID in its own little way. And, and it kept us interested and people interested. And it's just, it's so exciting to get to explore different ways and ideas and keep expanding. Like for me, one of my favorite parts about printmaking that kept me in there was when I was in college many years ago because I had this whole group of people just... Mm -hmm. All with the same technique, ending up with something different. So this gets to carry on that tradition mm -hmm. that I loved so much, but into a whole new realm mm -hmm. that we're going to continue doing. I mean, we're not, we're yeah. all, <laughs> we just started. Yeah. So, so we're, we're going to keep working on it. Yeah, so we have many um, thanks to give to Mandy for her help and guidance throughout this exhibit. And for Tom. And I feel like Tom, he twisted every person's arm in just the right way. <laughs> Which is what we needed. We needed him to keep, you know. He's very persuasive. Um, it is great. He's got so much passion for it. I couldn't be more uh, grateful. Yeah. And we're giving, we are going to be closed Christmas weekend and New Year's weekend. And then we're going to come back in and open it up. January 14th, and we're going to stay open through the month of January. So um, it's been a popular show, and people want to come back again and again. And so, I'm going to bring in a couple of copper plates so that when people come in, I encourage you to come in. You have to see a print in person. 
You yeah. just, you have, I'm just, you, Mandy's a print you don't understand, you have to. So I'll have some plates that'll be here. So if you're, if you want to see more of it, you get, you can come in and actually sort of see and understand that there's this huge piece of literal metal that comes in contact with yes. this paper and it's, it's nothing is like it. I mean, yeah. it's a very special thing and it's been an honor getting to have it here in Edison. So this is, yes, so come and see us. And Mandy, thanks again. That was so informative. Oh, absolutely. And sometimes if you come in on the weekend, uh, I work just next 